Traditionally, it's known as Kagari, but thousands of visitors call it Fraser Island, the world's biggest sand island and a mecca for nature lovers. But lurking off its coastline is a blight on its beauty. The deteriorating remains of a boat abandoned on the seabed, now little more than a navigational hazard. Maritime Safety Queensland is waging a war on more than 1,000 wrecks in the state. And it's sending in Kevin from Flag Alpha Commercial Divers to remove this relic. It's a really old timber motor cruiser. From what I can tell, we've had the divers go in and check it out. There's no engine, there's no transmission. It, it looks pretty bloody rotten. While it's still largely intact, the 14-metre wooden vessel is sitting upright in a bed of mud, its cabin protruding above the surface at low tide. An excavator will do the heavy lifting, hauling out the larger chunks of the wreck and then loading them onto a skip on a 45-metre long barge. Divers will then scour the seabed for smaller pieces left behind by the machinery. Kevin and his team have 24 hours to get the job done. The mission here, we're going to uh, load a great big long reach excavator on board this barge here. That's the Manta Ray barge that uh, takes all the tourists over to Fraser Island. And uh, we've got a big bin on there. So uh, tonight we're going to take the barge out into Pelican Bay and get settled next to this shipwreck. And at first light, we're going to start eating it up and throwing it in the bin. The 280 tonne barge is used to carrying heavy cargo but the waterway around the wreck is extremely shallow and Skipper Tony is concerned about navigating his way through at anything less than the highest of tides. Yeah, we went to go in and set on today's tide, but it's too small, so we'll, tonight's tide's a metre bigger, thereabouts. There's no hard and fast plan on it. It's just get in, get out and don't wreck anything. Underwater, the challenge will be even harder. The divers are going to have to work in zero visibility and uh, I'll have radio communications to them so I can tell them to get in, get out and watch out for the excavator. Which is where the third key player in this maritime recovery mission comes in. She's quite a machine. I love working with Perry and, and this machine. She's 25 tonne, Perry. Yeah, 25 tonne. We're going to bring these uh, rolls of uh, conveyor belt rubber out and we're going to lay them on the deck because, of course, this is the Fraser Island barge, mate. Takes all the lovely tourists to Fraser Island on holidays, and we don't want to tear up the deck with the walking tracks. This $200,000 beast, which costs around $1,500 a day to hire, has some equally impressive accessories. The rock grabbers, and they go in, they just munch it up and grab big hunks of shipwreck. The precious payload safely on board Time for one final talk about tactics. What's the plan anyway, mate? It's going to be an interesting one. Whether we get out on tomorrow's high water or not, I'm going to take this in position tonight. See how you go. With time and tide waiting for no man, the success of this demo rests on everything going to plan. The front ramp has been lowered to give Perry and his excavator unobstructed access to the wreck. Well, he's just going to try and tear it apart with that grab once he gets it hooked up. So if he can't uh, bust it up with the grab, he'll put a pick on there and bust it up. But it's not always smooth sailing when working from a platform that moves. No damage done, so Perry is set to start picking up parts of the wreck like matchsticks. The excavator arm extends out to an impressive 15 metres, and with attachments in place, it's far enough to reach the seabed below. Seems to be doing all right. As predicted, the excavator is making short work of the rotten wreck but smaller pieces are escaping its clasp. Hey, barely go and pick up all these bits that are floating away, eh? Everything is going so quickly, Kevin and his team of divers haven't made it to the site yet. Nothing visible now, so it's braille. No, I can't see any of it now. We took everything away that's above the water. 
In his haste to get the job done before the tide turns, Perry has removed Tony's point of reference to the site. Not only is Kevin missing in action, now the wreck is too. Yeah, every time the excavator slews, it moves the boat. I don't even know which way I'm going to go to get it back on station. After losing sight of the derelict vessel... Oh! Yeah, we just ran over the top of it. It's right here. And stumbling across it again, the crew has marked its location with two boys. Give us a reference point anyway. Even with floats marking the last known spot, the crumbling wreck is proving difficult to grab. Still hit the mess. I think it's full of mud. It's been there that long. The bottom's just passed. It's a painstaking process, but they're slowly making progress. Look at this. There's a good piece coming out. That looked like the refrigerator. <laughs> We've got the back half of it up. It's still a keel in there somewhere. We there and then we hit something that's pretty solid. We don't do it again in here. There you go. Uh, it looks like we've got both fuel tanks and both water tanks. All right, Tony, uh, I reckon that's a wrap, bro. The bin's full. We're not picking up anything more significant there. I reckon we've got, uh, you know, 98% of this boat. Anything else is probably that far under the mud. Uh, it, it won't be visible or able to be retrieved. Yes. I'll lead you out of here on the, uh, on the deepest track, eh? Roger, mate. OK, roger that. We're out of here. When the mud settles, the divers will return for a final sweep of the wreck's resting place. But for the barge and its hefty cargo, they're clear just in the nick of time. Tony said that he skimmed off uh, a sandbar there a couple of times, and, you know, that just takes the barnacles off for him, that's all.